All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, as Deb mentioned, uh, I've been presenting quite a lot in, uh, in these uh, Badger Line user groups. And last time we did uh, uh, Creo uh, tips and tricks, I believe. And this time uh, it's going to be on the simulation tools, uh, two new exciting uh, ones that I personally was an analyst during my industry day. So I'm, I really like these two uh, tools that PTC has. Uh, those who are not, uh, those who don't know me, my, my name is Satyagu Kalaniyap and I work for TriStar. Um, those who are not familiar with TriStar, um, uh, real quick, if you're a company that specializes in uh, helping uh, manufacturing companies uh, adopt software systems and processes, right, uh, to enable or allow better and more efficient product development. And we do that by being um, the largest uh, value-added resellers worldwide for PTC, right? We are headquartered in Phoenix in Arizona. Uh, I'm myself, I'm based out of the Chicagoland area, been here for several years now. Um, I started with uh, the old Pro Engineer version 16 back in 96, was in the industry for a good part of my career. So at TriStar, we do have um, a team of engineers um, that are spread across the United States and Canada. Uh, and we are, uh, we help with eventual implementation uh, on the CAD side with simulation as well as with new custom products. So it's a quick overview about our company. Now from an agenda standpoint, uh, as always, I, I wanted to make sure that we maximize the time and I can I want to show you as much as possible using the software. Uh, but some of you may or may not be familiar with these um, with the PTC's new uh, ANSYS partnership. So what I wanted to um, go over initially is maybe like a, a computer-aided engineering landscape in Creo, right? How, how, what are the options there? Very high level. And then we'll get into the, the, the big partnership that happened like two years ago or two and a half years ago between PTC and ANSYS. And then the two tools, which is Creo Simulation Live. And then there's also a new one they introduced in Creo 7 called Creo ANSYS Simulation, which is more for high fidelity, some of you may be experienced, some of you may not be experienced in FEA. So it's gonna, um, two, two solutions for uh, different use, use cases there, right? Um, and I had a Q and A towards the end, but feel free to start. I, I know that all of you are muted right now, uh, like Deb mentioned, but please feel free to start uh, typing in your questions in the chat session, maybe towards the end. I'll try my best to, um, you know, just go over those and try my best to answer those questions as much as I can. Um, those who may, some of you may, again, uh, you, you may be using Creo for some time or the old pro engineer. So I thought of this, uh, talking through this slide real quick on the computer-aided engineering landscape in Creo, right? Uh, we do know that uh, the old pro engineer as well as a new Creo has had Pro Mechanica or Creo Simulate as they call it. And then there are a variety of other simulation tools like mechanism design, mechanism dynamics for force and calculations or reaction calculations, right? Then there is MATCAD, there is a, um, tolerance analysis. They call it now easy tolerance analysis for 1D tolerance stack up. So this is the overview of the current um, options you have from an analysis standpoint, right? There are a few other things that I've not even mentioned here and here, oh yeah, there's a, like behavioral modeling extension or BMX for optimization or design optimization. But uh, during this presentation, I thought I, sh I want to focus mainly on this ETCs and uh, partnership with ANSYS, um, mainly on their two tools. Uh, one is a live simulation, called Creo uh, Simulation Live, and then this new uh, ANSYS simulation introduced in Creo 702, oh, the latest, one of the latest eight codes of uh, Creo. Um, so two and a half years ago, uh, PTC kind of embedded, uh, or I should say they started um, giving uh, a, a, they came up with a new tool called Creo Simulation Live, which is essentially ANSYS Discovery Live embedded inside of Creo, fully integrated, right? So you're able to make instant changes, instant feedback of your designs rather than doing the typical, you know, pre processing, post processing, solving. You know, you know it's using GPU based computing, so real time feedback for designers and engineers that may not be. Uh, FEA experienced, but still would like to get the ANSYS technology in their hands as they're doing their design, right? During the initial stages, that's very helpful. So, so they started, um, you know, we all know PTC has been out there for some time, right? Like 25, 30 years. And then we do know ANSYS has been doing simulation for a long time. So just nice to see both of them partner together to come up with these two tools in here. One is ANSYS simulation and the other one is Creo 
simulation live, right? And I'll go through uh, examples, multiple ones, uh, of both of them one by one here. So real quick, before I show you some examples, uh, Creo Simulation Live um, is supported since Creo 4, 4.0, the MO90 date codes. It's there in 4, 5, 6, 7, and of course, 8 will be out in like a couple of months from now, or in a month, next month, probably. Um, it's mainly meant as a directional tool. Um, so it's uh, more for some, some quick feedback as I'm making changes, right? I want to do some what-if scenarios and uh, give me some direction as a designer or as an engineer if I'm going in the right direction. That's really what Creo Simulation Live is meant to be, right? Very, very quick. Um, you're not even, you don't even have a solve button, right? You just say, apply the loads constraints and then you just send, hit uh, show me the results. That's how quick it is because it's leveraging not the CPU that traditional FEA software uses, you're using the GPU, right? So there's a requirement for the GPU graphics card and we will go over that too. Um, and then they also came up with uh, this new tool called Creo Ansys Simulation starting Creo 7, which is more for some of you may be more uh, experienced in FEA and you'd like to have a much more of a higher fidelity, higher accurate solution, more than just being a directional tool. So more for uh, somebody that may not be an analyst or maybe a part-time analyst at the same time you're doing design work, but you'd like to know to go a little bit beyond Creo Simulation Live, and that's Creo Ansys Simulation. So really, there are two tools here that I wanted to quickly go over. Um, again, um, it's really the Ansys discovery uh, that many of you may have heard of when Ansys came out with this groundbreaking product about two and a half years ago, and PTC uh, has kind of integrated that fully inside. That's the engine that's driving Creo Simulation Live. And you can do structural, thermal, modal, and also fluid flow starting Creo 7. Um, and then ANSYS simulation is, okay, you know, some of you would still prefer to refine the mesh. You'd still like to apply contacts and, you know, joints, and you may want to have some more additional capability. That's when the Creo ANSYS simulation takes over, wherein that's more meant for the final validation phase. Uh, it's, that is using traditional CPU. Uh, it could leverage a GPU for the results, but mainly it's your traditional FEA tool, but it's ANSYS powered integrated inside of Creo Parametric. So um, let's take a, just to give you a, a quick look in here, I know I do have um, uh, an NVIDIA graphics card that has about four gig of video RAM. That's one important requirement. I mean, PTC recommends eight gig, but their minimum requirement is four gig of video RAM on the GPU. You know, that's what is really giving you results in quick time. Uh, that is one of the biggest um, uh, advantages of using Creo Simulation Live, right? So. Take a quick break from this um, from the presentation. I'll get back to it in a bit here, and let me go up uh, to Creo. So what I have is 7030. Uh, you know, PTC just last week or this week they released the latest date code. I just have that, and I'm going to open up um, a very simple uh, file first in here. Let me see if I could open up uh, a part. You know, I can do parts and assemblies, and I got a as you can see as simple as you can get a very simple part in here. Um, and first, let's take a look at the Creo um, Simulation Live products. I'm going to go to Live Simulation, and uh, as you can see here, I do have um, a structural analysis and a modal analysis set up. And all I've done is I've fixed it at the bottom, and I'm, I've applied a, a, a load um, on, on, on through that hole right there. Right, if you if you see the the load that I applied is about um, so much values. You know, um, 100 pounds uh, is what I've applied there and I'd like to know um, what is uh, what is the stress, what is the deformation. And I just hit this little uh, button here. So there's really literally no um, meshing or solving or run button, right? Technically all you're doing is constraints, loads, and then you're just saying, show me the results, right? So when you do show the results, what is kind of happening there is it is leverage, it is making use of the GPU uh, right, so the higher, the more the video RAM, the higher, a better um, you know, video RAM you have on your graphics card, it's going to be faster and more accurate, right? And and you can control the, the performance in here. You can you can see there's a little uh, slider here. You can push it to the right, as you can see here. You want to have it more accurate or faster solution. So that is a simple part. It came out pretty quick in there, um, and it did. It's giving me like obviously my my. Uh, von Misi stress, right? So maybe this is something I would compare against the yield strength of steel. That's a maximum. I could have it, you know, show me where the maximum is. Um, I could also have it do the 
usual animation, right? Uh, look at the deformation, etc. right? So that's there. Um, one thing I'd like to do is maybe, this is something that uh, it looks like I'm in a different environment, like in a simulation environment or a live simulation environment, but I could just be in my regular modeling environment too, right? I could be in this uh, environment here and I could start uh, just saying, okay, so I have a sharp edge there and maybe I should add a round. And I'm just in my regular design environment here. I'm around, adding the round, adding some fillet or something there, right? I'm adding a quick round feature there. And that's pretty much it. It goes back to blue. It's the, it's, it's the software is essentially um, doing the analysis in real time and giving me feedback as to will the stress, okay, it did decrease a bit, not as much as I would expect it. So maybe I don't think I want that. I'm going to probably go and instead of that, could we try other things? So I'm in my regular design environment and I'm not, you know, really spending time going into an, in the simulation environment, spending time, time or meshing it and all that. I want some quick feedback. Am I going the right direction? That's really what I want here, right? Uh, maybe I have a little ribbon here that I've suppressed. Um, you know, I could have created manually too. So as you can see that that rib has been resumed and now all the way from 70 megapascal, let us really come down to about two megapascals in there. And obviously it's having a little more, you know, added some more strength in there. That makes sense. But it's more like I can keep changing this and I get immediate feedback, right? So that's really what this GPU-based um, uh, Creo Simulation Live does, uh, you know, or helps designers with, right? I can, I'm in my Creo modeling environment and I'm able to turn off and on results, right? That's uh, pretty straightforward, then, right? Now, just to go over in an assembly, right? It's not just on, on parts. I mean, just to give you another example on, on a typical part, um, um, this also helps for like design exploration or in my in your uh, concept design stage, right? There could be situations where, you know, as you can see, I'm, I'm, in, an, I'm in the, I'm taking the role of a designer who doesn't have a fee experience, but I might want to create the support plate real quick and I'm going to activate that. I'm in my assembly mode and, you know, I'm in my regular day-to-day -day design activities here, right? I, I do have a few sketches already done, but I'm thinking I'm probably going to use this guy here for my extrude, right? I'm going to just extrude that, um, you know, shift selected, that snaps to it. I'm going to go right mouse click, go to my site two, and I'm going to just go say, okay, let's go up to that point. And at this point, I'm thinking, um, okay, I've not done any, I've not done my fillets, I've not done my ribs or nothing in here. Is this, am I going in the right direction, right? That's all I want, right? I may not want to have a very high accurate solution, but just give me a ballpark of what would be the stress right now. If I put in about a hundred pounds on that face, what would be the stress? That's really what I'm interested in, right? So I'm, um, I'm like in the early design stage is where I am in, right? So I'm going to go again, go back to my live simulation uh, and it's loading its, um, you know, the, the Creo simulation live, there it is, right? There's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and I'm going to go and use my mini toolbar, just like your regular Creo parametric uh, environment, right? I'm going to fix that guy there. I'm going to just say, let's apply a load. Uh, we'll just go give it a, there's my triad in there, right? Y axis going up, so I, I can just go. Let's see here. I can go and give it a negative uh, value, right? I'm just giving it some, some 100 pounds or some value. Then at this point, I'm just going to say, okay, let's see what happens, right? Let's, I just say, show me the result. So this is something I didn't set up anything, right? Unlike the previous bracket, I just really created, um, you know, it, you know, I had a couple of extrudes done and I, I'm looking at the stress in here and it says it's about 17 megapascal, right? Right in there. Now I'm thinking, okay. Um, I'm going back to my design mode or I'm in Creo and saying, okay, what happens if I redefine that extrude and use this shape instead, right? So I'm essentially having multiple external sketches here, right? I'm sure all of you, you know, in Creo, you have the ability to, one of the advantages of external sketches that you could use either any one of them and you can drive your design, right? That's really what I'm doing here real quick, right? So there it is, I'm, I'm going to go to shape two. Um, and I didn't have to go say run, or regenerate, I'm out of that mode and immediately it's sticking in here and it's saying it's 50. So what I could do, I could even keep track of these, right? So for example, um, let me just get out of this. Uh, I'm gonna go back to redefine here. I'm gonna go back to the shape one that I had. It's almost like I'm exploring these. I could either do a design exploration session at this, at this point 
or inside of my life simulation, I could have probes in there. So I can just say, okay, let's add a maximum uh, stress on this uh, entire model, right? There is a von Mises stress, you know, it's kind of showing where that maximum von Mises stress is there. I'm gonna save that, that it is at 17 megapascals right now. I'm gonna also say, accumulate the data when I make changes to it, right? So what that is gonna do is if I click in here, it's kind of, keeping track, it's like graphically, what is the stress right now, right? It's just a report it's giving me. Now I could just go back and say, okay, let's do all those different variations, right? I might wanna say, okay, let's try this one instead of that shape, I redefined it. It's uh, kicking in, in in real time, it's kind of saying, okay, from, you know, looks like that, that didn't help at all, right? From 17, it jumped up to 50, right? Right in there, if I look at my, there it goes, right? It's, it's increased in there right now, right? Or maybe I could just say, okay, let's go redefine it to, let's see, uh, this shape in here, and let's see if that helps a bit. This is you know, during the initial design stage, it might, it's um, kind of very useful. I think it's back to 15, that's good news, right? Better than before. Um, um, and then I can maybe, let's see if I have, uh, I have a few sketches done in here. Um, there's another, you know, a little more of a different shape with a couple of arcs in there. Um, that seems to, again, I'm just allowing it to settle in there. You know, the results are just takes literally in, 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 in you know, um, in, in, in a few seconds in there, it gives me that it's packed up to 52. So there it is, right? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my, um, uh, uh, my the history and saying, okay, we went from there to here to there, and it's, it's, we are, we're in the, still in the process, right? I'm thinking, you know, I, I would rather just use that uh, original uh, shape that we had here, right? That's probably what I'm gonna do for now. Um, and maybe we'll try to improve upon this, right? So it says, uh, what, where is my max uh, minimum, right? It says you know, there's a maximum, um, and maybe I could start adding and throwing in some, some rounds like before, right? So maybe in the other model, we did some, we'll just add some rounds in there. Let's see if it helps, we'll probably add a fillet or a chamfer on the other side. And it, uh, it's again, it's helps, it does, it did help, as you can see, just come down to 14 right there, the maximum stress. Uh, I'm gonna go back and say, let's add a chamfer in here. Um, I really like these uh, new mini toolbars that TTC introduced in Creo 6, everything right on the mouse cursor. So we'll just do a little uh, D1 by D2 kind of, uh, let's see, a chamfer, let's add some material essentially there to help uh, with the stress. And now the stress is back on the other side in there, but it's it's decreasing. We are making some progress as we as we as we speak here, right? And if I look at my uh, design states right in there, and you know I do see that okay, we tried with the first iteration, then went up there, and then came down, and then we are we are going the right direction. See, that's what I was talking about more that it's a directional tool, right? Now I might still want it to have it below ten, or I might have some some yield strength criteria. And this is when I'm, I could, I, in my modeling environment, right, I do have a, a datum plane in here where I'm gonna use uh, that to create a rib, a profile rib, right? You know, ribs should help, you know, obviously strengthen this. It's gonna add weight, obviously, but let's try it out, right? So I'm gonna go add a, just use the alt and, and grab these guys real quick. You know, holding alt kind of essentially allows you to select references as you sketch, right? There it is. Uh, just did an open sketch because for a profile rib, you have to have an open sketch, right? So these are all regular design things that I'm doing here. Um, and once I'm done, the, the analysis was on, right? It's, uh, it kicked in and it said, it, it brought it up, right? Actually, it, 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 from 12, it's back up to 17. And I'm thinking, you know, let's just add a few more ribs and see if that helps, right? I'm gonna do a pattern. There are different types of pattern, right? The direction, axis, all that is right in your uh, mini toolbar here. I'm gonna just say, let's do uh, a direction pattern and set it to, uh, let's see here, about, about three or so, right? I've, I've increased the, um, the strength, obviously, hopefully now, and it's, uh, we'll just wait for it. Yeah, it did bring it down to 13, but it's, you know, we are still a little higher than where we were, and I'm thinking, okay, to, you know, all these are some, some common sense, you know, design things that we normally do, right? Okay, so, but we have to have, an idea of what's going on, what is the stress, what is the deflection. Maybe I'm gonna increase it a bit here and we'll see if that kind of helps, you know, if you're adding more material and a little more stiffness due to that geometry there, it's making it a little more stiffer in, in a sense. Uh, and that did bring it down to 6.7 megapascals. So if I look at my history here, right, and I can export this 
to Excel and, and all that, right? So, but you get an idea of why I call this a directional tool where I'm, I'm not even, you know, I might, I might still need to do a lot of features and mount and pull, you know, I, I'm not yet through with my design, but at a very early stage, I'm able to, uh, you know, look at some of the information, um, just, just some feedback, right? Um, uh, that's, that's the advantage. Now, I could always go back, now that I know I have, I'm in a, uh, in a position where I could move forward, I could say, okay, what about the entire assembly? Those parts are great, but what about the entire assembly itself? And I can just go and say, maybe let's mirror this guy um, on to the other side, right? So maybe I wanna go into use, use one of the planes for mirroring it. Uh, just do a little preview, there it goes. I created a left-hand side, right-hand side, kind of a part right there. Might do some changes on the other side maybe, but I could do the overall assembly or uh, in assembly, there was a way to import a part level study into an assembly. That's very useful for scoping the design. For example, uh, um, I could just go and say, instead of doing a new one, I could just go import existing simulation, right? From the part level to the assembly level, quite useful to look at it. So this part, we already did an FEA. I just wanna grab that study into my assembly right there, right? That's the one. Um, and I'm gonna go activate that. And uh, I'm also gonna make sure the scope is just this part, right? I don't want to worry, I don't want you to worry about the entire assembly, just this part. And I do the same um, live simulation again. And it kind of gives me um, an idea of uh, the stress. At the same time, it's only showing me the stresses uh, on that part alone in the context of the assembly. So you could scope this, the scope feature pretty, very, very useful introducing Creo 6.0 in Creo Simulation Live where you can scope specific components that you're interested in, right? And that's where it's really acting, you know? So even if I do my animation and uh, deformation, as you can see, it's really not taking into account everything in there, but in the assembly mode, I wanna have an idea of how the part behaves. That's really what I'm looking at here. Now I might say that, okay, once I might go back to my, uh, to another analysis here, I can I can always create a new analysis, right? A number of studies in here, structural thermal model, but this time I probably want to run the entire assembly. You know, let's see how fast that is going to be. The parts look pretty pretty quick, and I know. Um, let's see. So I'm going to go and uh, not activate, but I'm just going to go go back to live simulation, and we'll just uh, fix this guy here at the bottom. We'll just assume that's fixed. And I'm going to go add a force um, up on this surface, let's, let's say here, and we'll just go give it a couple of, uh, just bear with me while I add some, uh, just give a negative 100 in here. I'm just using my triad in here, right? You know, we'll just apply uh, downward uh, and then maybe the Z direction will apply 100. So it's, so the resultant will be at like 45 degree right there, as you can see. And once all the materials are assigned, you know, I've already assigned the materials for all the parts in here in the assembly, you just hit um, the simulation uh, show results. And this takes a few more seconds, as you can see, compared to all the, the, the two demos I did so far, the parts, right, the individual ones, but it does work with the assembly as well, right? So that is pretty quick, right? Normally, the time you would take to even mesh an assembly like this in either a Creo Simulate or a traditional FEA tool does take time. But this one gives you some quick feedback there. Again, I'm gonna to go to my deformation and analysis. And the, the thing here is though, is we are assuming they're all bonded, right? So I'm assuming that this is bonded or welded. And in the real world, that may not be. And that's when, you know, a, a full-blown Creo ANSYS simulation might be a better fit. But it, it does give you um, results for uh, assemblies like this as well, right? So that's that's one thing. Now, now this is not a very complex assembly. It's, it's not a lot of parts in here, right? Uh, if you look at the number of parts, not a whole lot, but imagine uh, if I could just close this one here and if I opened up, uh, let's see if I could open up uh, another uh, one in here or something. Let's see if I could open up. Assembly, uh, this one yeah, here. It's a rear axle, uh, kind of like an assembly that has a lot more components in here, right? As you can see, if I go to uh, my selection filter and, and search for parts or look for parts, there it is. It tells me 54 selected. If I double click on that, it kind of tells me, you know, there's it's, it's, uh, about, you know, most of them, some of them are hardware, obviously, but still, 
it is the, the geometry itself is, is a little more complex where many times you'll have to, you know, during my analysis days, when I get a model like this from the designer or the engineer and I have to do an analysis, I'll have to first de-feature it and you want to keep the mesh working and all that, right? So here I just go to live simulation and I've already applied, you know, a load and, and constrained it. Uh, no need to mesh or anything. You're just again leveraging the GPU and I'm saying, give me the results or show me the results, right? Like I said, you don't, there's no run. It, it is running. I mean, it's state leveraging um, ANSYS proprietary, you know, discovery engine is what is working behind the scenes in here. Uh, it's leveraging your GPU. So you will need um, uh, an NVIDIA CUDA based graphics card uh, because that's critical or it's very important. It's a prerequisite to use pre live simulation since it's not using the CPU, it's using the GPU. And uh, as you can see here, it's um, it, it came out pretty well for a large assembly like that. I mean, quick time. And of course, I can again switch to deformations or, or uh, uh, stresses. You know, I can do the same probes, add specific areas of interest, or maybe I might just say, okay, that's the only thing. I want to isolate that guy and just look at that component alone. You know, you're able to do all that. So, so again, from an assembly or a complexity standpoint, you know, uh, when they're all bonded and you just want to have some overall direction as to are you going the right direction to design, what are my stresses, deflection, it's it's kind of useful in that, that way, right? So that's just to give you um, a couple of examples um, in there, right? Now, uh, getting back to my uh, presentation here, they also allow uh, Creo Simulation Live thermal, modal, and fluid flow, right? Um, so, for example, when I say uh, modal analysis, I might be interested in, uh, for example, let me just show you a quick one on a, on a, on a modal. I might be interested in this in this valve cover uh, design here, right? Um, this is probably going to fit onto a, an assembly that's having its own vibration uh, characteristics, and they're asking me to get the natural frequency of these and the different mode shapes. That's the intent here, and I'm still thinking: should I be using uh, aluminum? Should I be using a different material? So. Apart from dimensional or geometry changes, I'd also like to change the properties and see the effect of that on the analysis, right? So again, I go to my life simulation and I'm able to go and say, let's just do a model. So far I did all the structural, I'm gonna do a model uh, simulation here. And the model simulation, you're not applying any load, right? You're just getting the natural frequencies in the mode shapes. And I'm gonna just say, let's fix this guy, right? I fixed that surface in there. And I'm gonna to go to my materials and I already have, you know, ABS and aluminum 2014. And let's just say, I wanna set that as my, um, I have assigned aluminum right now. And I'm gonna just say, um, just hit the, the play button or, or the show me the results button there. And it's working on it, you know, so there it is, right? It's, uh, it's, it's still doing its uh, modes, as you can see, if I, if I kind of zoom in here. 947. It's gonna. I gotta allow it to sit, sit there for a little bit for it to kind of, um, you know, um, settle down there on the results as it's changing in there, right? It's um, it's uh, it's it's 912. That's where it's thinking the mode one is. It gives you the six modes, right? Mode one, mode two, mode three. You can look at the mode shapes. Uh, also, right, you can look at the, the, the different mode shapes if you want. Um, now I'm going to go back to mode one. That's where I'm in. I, I can look at, uh, let's see here, uh, mode six, right? Um, and, the, and look at the shape two, or I could simply go into uh, my little uh, simulation report. And I just clicked on the simulation report and it's giving me uh, a picture, uh, obviously of the analysis. Uh, this is something I can export. There it is, right? The different frequencies. When I use it, I mean, aluminum as a material right there, that's the frequency I'm getting. Now, what happens if I go switch it to ABS and I'd like to know the natural frequency in there. So again, you see it, it goes back to blue. That means it's, it's redoing its calculation and I can hear my computer right now. The fan is spinning in there, the GPU. If you, if you look at my um, task manager, just to kind of give you an idea what's going on, um, Right there, my, there's my Creo 7, right? You can see uh, it's kind of using those, uh, look at the GPU uh, of my graphics card, right? It's kind of using that, um, you know, uh, okay? So again, if you look at the, the modes, mode one through mode six, you know, it's a different frequent, you know, you can look at that and you can again say, okay, let's take a snapshot. No files are being created, you know, pretty much. This is something that you're not creating any additional files you have to manage. 
each time you just say show or play results. That's pretty much it. And, and the same thing with the, with, the, with the thermal analysis, you can do the same thing, right? So if I go into uh, one of my uh, PCB uh, assemblies in here, for example, better this, um, if I go to live simulation, already, you know, there's this heat shield, uh, there's a few chips and a few components in here that are, you know, that have some heat loads and I'm interested in knowing the temperature distribution, obviously, right? So pretty straightforward, you assign the heat loss to convection and the heat flow or the heat flux, right? And the prescribed temperature, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, and if I go, let's say, want to already apply a couple of loads in here, right? Different loads, maybe we'll just assign a, a heat load in here. We'll just give it a, a specific value um, for the heat load. Maybe also we want to make sure that uh, the, these geometries uh, have some convection boundary conditions. I'm going to go to my convection boundary condition and maybe we'll just, um, select some of the surfaces in here, including this guy here. And I'm getting, get applying, and I'm not doing a fluid flow here per se, um, but I'm just applying an empirical value for the uh, heat transfer coefficient for it. And then let's give it an ambient temperature in here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it, right? So having done those, I just say play, and then it's going to give me the temperature distribution on this assembly there. So it's, Again, really quick feedback. The instantaneous feedback is the main, main thing that I like about Creo um, live, Simulation Live, right? The instant feedback. And you know, before doing, it, it would be helpful for both analysts and designers. For analysts, before they do a higher fidelity, longer run with it's going to take a couple of hours or so, at least you know, the number of iterations initially, am I going in the right direction? What can I expect? That type of a um, you know, results is what I'm looking for real quick. And, and this is where I might again go and say, okay, these fins, what happens if I go to those uh, uh, same thing that we did with the, with the structural site, right? I could say, okay, what happens if I use a straight uh, shape instead of that one, right? I want to um, regenerate that and will that um, update or change my results, right? Um, if I, or maybe I might go into a live simulation um, or uh, like if I could even activate my Creo model here and say, you know, I don't know, this might be an imported model or a Creo model, it doesn't matter. I might just say, okay, um, that guy right here, maybe I want to just do a quick move or an offset or a, make it longer, right? So there, so that will help reduce the temperature maybe for the, for the, for the, for the, the heat sink in there, right? Um, so like these, you know, once I'm done with this, I'm, I'm getting back to Creo, uh, I'm really not even switching applications or tabs. You see me that right instead of Creo, I'm just enabling that just to give me some direction as to am I going uh, in the right direction for my um, goal here. If the, the temperature should be below certain value or maybe that increased. Whoops, I got to go change it. That type of um, you know analysis of what you get um, out of uh, Creo simulation live, right? So that's uh, so that's what we've seen. And um, one other thing that you could do is uh, with instead of Creo simulation live is also fluids. All right, that's also quite uh, uh, quick. You know, it gives you like immediate feedback. Um, if you're planning to do a fluid flow analysis, you could do that too. Um, now, one one thing it's important to note, like I was telling, is the hardware check. Right, you have to do uh, if you go to ppc.com and there's a hardware check utility. Right, I have it open already here. Whether you're using Creo 4, um, 120 and prior, or 130 or higher, or Creo 6 or 7, you have two different hardware checks. And when you do that, it'll, it'll kind of check your, uh, you know, your computer and see if, if it's compatible. So for example, if I were to just escape out of here, I just go, I have an NVIDIA graphics card. I go to my NVIDIA control panel here and I should be able to, uh, once it comes up, I go to my system information uh, and it should tell me like, you know, the, the main thing is that the video RAM in here, right? You see the system uh, dedicated video uh, memory right here. It's about four gig. Um, you know, PTC recommends eight gig and four gig is a minimum. So, uh, so that's just to give you an idea uh, on, on, uh, on the graphics card requirements there. Now, one other thing um, is uh, just some of the commonly used, um, you know, NVIDIA CUDA based uh, graphics cards are supported, right? They're all uh, in the PTC side. You can, you can look it up uh, on the support pages. They do have it. That's just, um, so that's just the initial, uh, the, the first product. And, and now let's take a, a quick look at the new Creo ANSYS simulation, right? So, so whatever I showed you so far, very much for the designer, 
that want some quick feedback and, and, and you're looking at all the demos that I showed and say, okay, that's all good, but what about the mesh refinement? You know, I'm someone that has used FEA in the past. I may have even used some ANSYS tools like ANSYS Mechanical, and now I'd like to go a little more deeper, right? Um, you know, nice to have that, that initial feedback really quickly, in, literally in seconds, but now I'd like to have a little more of a final validation check wherein PTC is uh, kind of using, again, ANSYS for that. It's a CREO called CREO ANSYS simulation, right? And it has um, a much more of a, a, you know, the mechanical solver is technically what is working behind the scenes there. And this is going to be continued to be developed by PTC moving forward, but it, it, um, it has a lot more um, options than with CREO um, uh, simulation live, I'd say, right? I mean, you got your constraints, um, you got your uh, support, frictionless support too, right? Planar cylindrical ball, different types of constraints that you can do. Uh, your uh, thermal boundary conditions uh, like radiation, convection, um, you know, those prescribed temperature, those are there. But the key is it has what ANSYS calls physics aware meshing built in. So depending on the physics you choose, right? Whether it's thermal, um, whether it's gonna be structural or modal, depending on that, it understands to give you the, the, the meshing accordingly, right? I mean, whether it's gonna be hexahedrons or tetrahedrons, you're able to have much more control on that, like in, much in, in around fillets or when the curvature becomes higher, I'd like to have a finer mesh in those regions. So you got it, this is like much more of a full-blown um, FEA solution that some of the analysts may be familiar with. At the same time, it's kind of easy to use for a designer or the engineer. Right, so um, it has idealizations like, you know, as many of you may have known, idealizations are mathematical approximations, right? I could have a really huge, large engine assembly and I can just, um, you know, um, simply assume that as a point in my overall design and give it a weight and then see what is the effect of that weight on the rest of the design. I don't have to have the entire CAD model, right? That's idealizations, like beam idealization springs, uh, shell idealization. So they do support some of those and there's going to be some improvements in CREO 8 and 9 and 10 moving forward in these areas, but uh, it also has uh, connections, uh, bonded uh, connections, what type of connections you want. Nonlinear contact not yet supported, maybe in the next release, but you know, it's still uh, the joints are very useful. Uh, instead of CREO simulate, uh, I, I used to use uh, weighted links or rigid links or spring elements to kind of have that kind of a behavior. To, to enable or disable certain degrees of freedom. And you could just use joints, which is a, it's a much, much, much better method uh, to, to uh, mimic certain behaviors, especially in assembly mode, right? Um, and the results in there, which this can leverage GPU. So this doesn't have a GPU requirement. You can just use your regular RAM, CPU, four cores, right? That, that's kind of what it, what it uses there. So, okay, so let me, uh, let's take a quick look at, uh, at that too. Now, um, let's see here, um, we'll do a quick time check. So before I get into the CREO ANSYS simulation, one thing, uh, one thing I, I did not um, show when I was showing the CREO simulation live as a, as a fluid example. So I could go in that same live simulation. Uh, we, we showed you structure thermal and model and I could do a fluid study wherein I have a thermal mixture scenario here. And, 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 and most of the time in a fluid flow software, one of the biggest things is to get the fluid domain, right? Okay, so how do I get that? Is that's automated inside of CSL, right? So all I do is I already have a domain that I created it and I could use it, but here I'm gonna go internal uh, volume. It can also be external, right? And I just use the seed and boundary method selection in Creo behind the scenes. That's what it's using, as you can see. As soon as I pick these three surfaces, it understood to pick those internal surfaces in there and it has created the, the fluid volume for me. So if you look at my, you know, in Creo 7, we, we support the body concept in here. If I hide the main body, there's my fluid body. Pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. It's already built in there. Now I can just go assign maybe, um, let's say a velocity in here, right? I'm gonna go and say, okay, I wanna assign, uh, let's see here, we'll just give it a, um, a specific velocity. Let's see here, uh, about five meter per second. I'm gonna assign a, a velocity here. We'll just give it a, the y direction, we'll give it a negative 15 meter per second right in there. And um, in, in all um, fluid flow problems, you would have seen, you know, when we know this is gonna be atmospheric pressure, you just 
it's gauge pressure is what we apply, right? So output pressure, just give it zero pascals. Does that mean, I mean, as you all know, the difference between gauge pressure, absolute pressure, and the atmospheric pressure. The atmosp it's just atmospheric pressure. That's why I'm giving zero for the gauge pressure right there. And now I should be able to just, just go into my uh, fluid in here and say apply uh, material, right? It could be air, water, engine oil, what have you. I'm just going to give it a water right in there. We'll just assign water and it has all the properties, right? Like your viscosity and uh, your density, you know, coefficient of thermal expansion, specific heat capacity, things like that. Um, that's built in, right? You can also create your own material, uh, fluid material, I should say. Um, and that's it. Or, or I could I could say, let's apply also a temperature, right? Let's say it's gonna be hot and cold and you know, what have you. So maybe I'm gonna assign uh, a specific temperature here for this. We'll just say it's gonna be in, uh, so, you know, maybe we'll just give it a 40 degrees Celsius there. And then you'll uh, probably assign a, a temperature for this surface too. Uh, we'll set it to, uh, 120, maybe, um, and and then I hit the little uh, play button in there, and what the system is doing right now is is giving me literally again the fluid flow instantaneously, right? Again, it's using that same kind of GPU um, based technology that's working. I'm still in Creo uh, Simulation Live, as you can see here, right? That's what it's still uh, in, you know giving me. I could look at the right now. I'm looking at the velocity. I could look at temperature, pressure, right? Um, I could look at the, the, the cut plane um, right in there, right? I could uh, I could say maybe I want to look at the direction field, right? Uh, maybe particles, uh, streamlines, what have you, right? So those are just just um, uh, you know. Uh, and by the way, this is uh, a transient uh, one in there, right? You could see it's it's uh, you could see the time uh, in there, right? Um, I could also have it show the the temperature, for example, right in there, right? It's it's no giving me um, the, the temperature and just allowing it to I go to my cut plane in there there it's right it's still allowing it to, it's still working on it and if you look at it uh, i can assign a time limit in there i can do my little uh, simulation probes and say okay what about the temperature in there and look at the graph and you know, just you could see that it's being a, a transient um a steady state is available uh, probably started starting creo 8.0 but right now it's still transient you could set up a limit for the time, but I, I get an idea of the temperature change on that point that I've picked uh, using the graph in here. So, so it's available. Uh, I mean, it's um, it, it gives you both fluid, uh, structural, thermal, all in quick time. That's the key here, right? So, um, and then it can also do like, um, for example, if I have to open up a external flow, right? You know, that's also pretty. It's nothing complicated um, for somebody who may not have ever done. I myself, I have a more background on the structural side than thermal or even um, fluid flow. But you could see that for somebody like myself or many of you who may not have done, used even a higher end uh, um, CFD tool, it's pretty straightforward to set it up and, and, and the quick feedback that you're getting in here, right? I do a fluid flow simulation and this I know is an external volume, enclosure volume. So I go to the and they have it built in, right? You can see how I'm just, it's almost like in your work phase and CNC, when you do in pro manufacturing, it's very similar to that, right? I just, there it goes, right? I, I just have some, uh, uh, I, I drag those to create my fluid volume, right? And then I'm gonna say, okay, there's my velocity. We'll just go, I wanna assign um, velocity of, uh, let's see here in, in the X direction, maybe therm, we'll just give it a, by an hour, we'll just give it 30, 30 meter per second right in there. Um, and then we'll also give a uh, slip symmetry because we want to let the software know that these are the surfaces where um, I want the fluid to be flowing along, right? So there's, you know, that's along that geometry. That's where I'm, I'm saying that's the slip symmetry there. And then I'm going to go give, as always, the outlet pressure, which is a gauge pressure zero. So that's, you know, that's the volume that I'm, I'm looking at. Um, and now I should be able to go and give it a, a material, right? I just, this is going to be air this time. Um, and then I hit the, the play button. And it's again, you know, the, the, the quickness with which it is able to run these sort of analysis. This is uh, pretty quick in there. It's taking a little more time in, in, in this particular specific uh, analysis. I could see that, right? That's the, the, the temperature and We'll also take a look at um, the velocity and you know other other thing you know you can you can take a look at it probably my thinking yeah uh, 
uh, my probably my GPU is still working on it in there, but yeah, there's there's I can I could go to velocity and while it's doing it, there it is. Yeah, there it goes. It just took a little few more seconds in there, right? As you can see here, I'm looking at the velocity and um, I can look at the streamlines this time, maybe without this. I could just show me the uh, the streamlines. It just takes um, a little more time in here. It's still uh, thinking about it, as you can see here. Um, And while it's uh, working on that, let me just switch back to my uh, yeah, this right. Um, just so really, uh, based on what I've shown so far, if you think about uh, the PTC's uh, Creo Simulation portfolio, right? You're all familiar with Creo Simulate or Advanced Creo Simulate. It used to be called Creo Mechanica. That used to be like two and a half years ago. This is the, uh, this is the thing that we had. It's still there. Um, very powerful. For vibration studies, large deformation, and advanced analysis, it still continued to be maintained. Um, but then there are additional tools now that we went over, like Creo Simulation Live, mainly focused on in this new ANSYS simulation starting 7020, right? And then um, we have a few more uh, additional tools that uh, we'll probably look at in another webinar. But there are some comparison tools with ptc.com if you go and you can see which one, depending on. What you're looking to do, right? You still have this old Creo Simulate tools, but then these are the two tools that, that, that I was uh, showing you. Actually, so if I go back to my uh, Creo, uh, let's see here if I could go. Yeah. One of the thing I wanted to quickly talk about uh, or show actually is if I go to let me launch a Creo from here um, is the comparison, right, between um, um, different. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, like when you open up a large assembly like this, and remember the time it typically takes to mesh and everything, right? So here are some 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 comparisons uh, of you know of the done using, uh, like for example, Creo Simulate, the traditional tool it takes three hours versus the time it would take in in uh, to give you a quick feedback. I'm talking about simple bonded, just pretty straightforward analysis without any advanced contact or things like that. The time it takes uh, in here less than 10 seconds versus three hours and, and those are uh, some of the big big uh, advantages of using um, these uh, this new tool in there. Now uh, one quick example I wanted to talk through here is really quickly is so if I open up a, a part uh, I'm going to open up a part in here real quick and what happens uh, if you need some more higher fidelity uh, results uh, wherein you know that is good for the for my initial uh, uh, direction, but give me a, a much more uh, you know robust. Uh, I should say, it's using a, a, a mesh based uh, where I can control the mesh, and um, you know I can look at the convergence criteria and, and set up the NR uh, you know method uh, criteria. In that case, you would, when you go into Creo and when you go to applications, right? You have this new ANSYS uh, simulation that's kind of new in in in, uh, in Creo um, seven point uh, 70720, uh, technically the MO20 date code, right? That's when they introduced this. So go to that one. As you can see, it points to me structured thermal. So I'm going to go structure and there are contacts. You know, if you want to define any bonded contacts, it can detect it. If it's an assembly, it would be helpful too. Uh, or if it's a part with multiple bodies, it can, um, you know, capture that too. So here, uh, let's say it looks very similar to what I've shown you so far. However, let's say I want to go and apply some some, um, some fixed constraints in here, uh, right? You know, I'm going to just constrain it in here. But the good thing about this one is I can just go generate a mesh, and this uses the, the mechanical solver. You can even export uh, the analysis to to Ansys Mechanical. You had a lot more tools in here, so you could see how I have this process manager that's in progress right now. It's saying that it's still. Uh, it's just, it's working on it. As you can see, it's, it did the mesh right now. And I could say, show me the mesh. Uh, and there it is, right? And this is where I might go into a little more, uh, I want, want to change the mesh. Right? It's a very, you know, it looks like it's not a, it's a very coarse mesh. And now some of you may not be familiar with, um, you know, what kind of mesh density you should apply for a specific type of analysis based on the aspect ratio that comes with experience. So in that case, you could simply say, okay, low to high, right? You could just say, I want to have, I can just push it all the way down here and I could say what happens if I generate the mesh so you had just two elements in there now you will see it's going to be an overall mesh density where it's changing a few parameters in there behind the scenes and and then it's going to come up with a much more 
um, higher density uh, mesh right in here, right, right in there. You can see that, you know, around the, you know, we got, if you remember before there was this, two, you know, lesser elements and you have, that's one option, or you could just go apply, um, you know, if you're a little more uh, familiar with some of the mesh control and some of the other FEA tools that you may have used, I could go say based off curvature, I want to control the angle or based on proximity, right? Um, I want to assign a growth rate for each layer. There's multiple options that, that you can play around with, as you can see here, right? Uh, I could even control the, if I go and say the angle, that's 30 degree angle, let's say if I should be five degree angle and it's going to be a, a little more finer mesh around the, um, around the curved regions. So you're able to have a lot more control um, in here, right? That's one advantage. But as for running the analysis and everything, it's still the same, right? So if I go back to my um, mesh control and, and just leave it uh, in here, I'm gonna just generate the default so it's just quicker in here. We're running closing on time in here. Just to show you, once you're, uh, I mean, it does it automatically actually even, you know, when you, when you run the analysis, but uh, I can just go and apply contacts, joins. You have a lot more options in here. And I can just go say, let's just run the analysis, right? Um, I apply the load in here, so we'll just uh, start applying it. Um, we'll just say apply a uh, load. We'll just go apply it in the negative uh, direction here. There it is. And um, yeah, it, it's um, it, let's see. It's a, yeah. You see that the process is still running in here. If I go open the process manager, it's uh, it's a one. And it shows the results and everything. So if I just go and run the rerun the the analysis that I've, uh, so here I'm doing your traditional pre-processing, meshing, post-processing type CPU-based FEA. But again, you know, it comes, you get that higher fidelity additional options, right? That's the advantage here. And you don't have to keep waiting while this is doing, you could obviously go work on your design or, you know, it's just a, a, a if you open, if I look at the, the Creo process manager, it's, it's one of those things that's kind of happening uh, in there, it just ran, I think there. And I can go look at, uh, I can activate, uh, as you can see here, I can activate the, uh, the deflection, the stress. Um, I could even create newer results that I might want. I might want to create a new contour plot. Uh, maybe I want to have some advanced results in here where I'm going to go use von Misi stresses and I can update my results in here. So you got a, a little more options uh, compared to that Creo simulation live. Um, so uh, for this, you will need Creo 7 and just the CPU based and GPU will help. If you do have GPU, it'll help you with the reporting. You can see the, the color and the fringe plot. They look very, very similar. So if I go activate that, I'm able to go um, do the animation with the mesh, right? This is where I figure, okay, there are areas where I should be able to, I should be able to go in um, and to have better convergence, maybe refine the mesh, et cetera, right? So that's a much more of a full like, solution there. Um, and when you do uh, assemblies, uh, for example, uh, you might have, if I go back to my uh, presentation here real quick, you might have larger assemblies like this, right? Wherein um, the suspension there, on, this is a motorcycle, uh, you know, the frame and the, and the back arm assembly there that I have analyzing. This is where I used ANSYS simulation, Creo ANSYS simulation uh, in here because I wanted to have those use the spring elements, the idealizations to 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 to, uh, to mimic the suspension there, and then um, I, I'm able to go and assign a little more of those those contact at least for now the the bonded contact um, and joints behavior is very helpful, right? I can control the degree of freedom uh, for a specific behavior between components, which you would normally do it with a lot of other types of connections. In Creo Simulate, you may use uh, things like um, weighted links, or rigid links that I might still use to use during the industry days, but that's uh, it's a lot better there. So that's those are uh, some of the, um, I thought at least uh, at a very high level, uh, I should show you uh, real quick uh, as to what are the um, two new uh, exciting tools inside of uh, uh, Creo um, uh, that we have. Uh, like I said, the, the portfolio that they have, you know, it's still uh, Creo Simulate, Advanced Simulate is still there, but these are the two things that we kind of focused on in here, so. Uh, this is Deb, uh, we're down to two minutes. Yeah. Um, oh, I see there's the slide. Um, there were a couple on the chat um, okay. and, it, and um, I'll, I'll be quiet now. 
Okay. Let me see if I can, should I be, I should be able to look at the chat, right? There it is. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Kirk, uh, you need to identify the material. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. That's Kirk, That's a good point. You know, so I had assigned in uh, the material uh, in um, Creo, right? In my um, part library. So if you, if you, whenever, when you saw me open up that, uh, let me just quickly show that. Yeah, I probably didn't uh, show that one to you. So whenever, uh, whenever I opened uh, any of those uh, parts in here, let's see if I could open up. Uh, there it is. So if I open up that that part in there, so you just do your regular, uh, you know, right click edit materials, and as you know, starting Creo four, PTC did um, uh, improve the library. It used to be for the last, uh, I'd say, twenty plus twenty four, twenty five years. I've always seen PTC had only aluminum twenty fourteen, just a few, and I used to customize it during my industry days and having my own material property, but. Uh, you could use uh, the new Granita based uh, material library. PTC partnered with Granita, right? And then they have a 50 plus materials like first material, steel, HSLA, cast. So you just double click into it, bring it into your uh, uh, model, right? And then you're essentially assigning one of them here. So I can just go steel, HSLA, set as master, and then simply run the analysis. So that's, I think that's what you're alluding to, right? Yeah, I probably didn't uh, show you that, but yeah, that's, that is there. Uh, Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. And then Paul, uh, qu the question from Paul is, how does the simulation treat connection? So yeah, that's a um, that's a very good question. Also, by default, right? When I open that uh, large, uh, not very large, but or, or that that rear axle assembly, or even you know, I think this one is what I had shown you initially, that part done and everything. Um, tech, you know, the real, you know, if I were to really um, think about this, right? I mean. Yeah, if I'm going to assume that these two surfaces are going to be stuck or glued or bonded or welded, then yes, Creo live simulation could work. But in reality, if you think about it, I might really um, have uh, a faster in here, a preload, and that becomes a lot more a higher end, I would say, contact analysis, which both these um, tools that I showed you do not support as of yet. I think. Uh, uh, that is more, uh, I would still use Creo Simulate for that. Maybe in Creo Simulation, we might see some nonlinear content coming up in the future. But right now, yeah, they're all um, uh, just assumed to be uh, uh, bonded, right, in, in, uh, in Creo Simulation Live. Having said that, inside of uh, ANSYS, the Creo ANSYS Simulation, where uh, I open up uh, one of these uh, steering joint assembly that I have here, if I ran out of time, I couldn't show you this one here. So and when I go into this one, and when I say ANSYS simulation here, if you see my, my joints, um, I have joints between these cylinders inside, right? So by the way, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about from here, I do want to control um, um, the behavior of when I apply a torque in here and apply a constraint in here, how is how are these two cylinders going to behave? And so inside of Creo ANSYS simulation, you have better options, right? For the joint behavior, right? So I could go to the joint and if I kind of redefine that joint, I can control if it's gonna be fixed, it's gonna be hinged translation slot. And I think this is a lot better than your traditional weighted link or rigid link that you would be using to allow like a flexible support kind of a thing, right? So that's, uh, that's there, right? But not in Creo live simulation. Hopefully that answered your question on the connections. Uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah, by default they are bonded. You're right. Um, and uh, is there a special Creo license needed for ANSYS simulation? So, so Mike, for, uh, yeah. So um, just I don't think I had the, the licensing in there, right? So if you look at, the, let me uh, open up here and I'll kind of show you. So two tools we talked about, right? This this Creo simulation live. Uh, is one thing, you know, the, the GPU based, you know, quick feedback directional tool that I was talking about, we call it CSL or Creo Simulation Live. That's also ANSYS based and that has um, a Creo Simulation Live license or a Creo Simulation Live Plus license. The live license just gives you structural thermal model and the plus gives you fluid flow too. Remember I was showing you that on, on the truck and, and, and the thermal that internal studies. So 
So there's that's uh, yeah. If you there's a plus license giving all four, or this license, but yeah, there's a, a trial. If you have Creo four MO ninety and later, I'm sorry, Creo five and later, you will see the trial in there, right? Even though it's technically supported in Creo four, but you should see when you go to live simulation, you'll see a little uh, uh, like a trial, and you can you can try it out too. Right? So, same thing with ANSYS simulation, right? So for ANSYS simulation. You go to applications, ANSYS simulation. In order for this, yes, I do have a license of Creo ANSYS simulation. That's another thing. You need Creo 7020 to make it work in there. So we should probably have that as uh, the, as our last uh, question. I've got 104. Um, okay. We are going to tape this, and um, it'll take maybe you know record it in the cloud, and maybe it'll take 30 minutes to come back. Um, TriStar probably will put this on their YouTube channel. Do you know, Thiago? Yeah, we can uh, definitely put that across. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check with, um, uh, with um, our, our marketing uh, on that one, uh, okay. Alex, I'm sure. And if not, you know, there's a, yeah, there are, we do have our webinar recordings. I've done quite a few of these even individually and you can look it up there, but this specific recording, yeah, I'll, I'll probably if it's available, uh, yeah, we put it in our YouTube channel or it would be in our uh, webinar recordings instead of TriStar, but um, yeah. Um, okay, great. Thanks well, again, Deb. Thank you so much. Thank you, it's really, really a lot of content there. And, and thanks everybody. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, great presentation. Thanks, Kirk. Mm -hmm.